unbelievable. It, is, it sure is. After nearly 15 months of relentless combat in Afghanistan, the soldiers of 2nd Platoon Charlie Company are filling their last sandbags. Doesn't this look like fun? <laughs> Go Army. This is video they shot themselves just 12 days before they were supposed yeah. to go home. This is the last 12 days in the morning. Uh, for 11 days in the wake up, we like to say. The outpost they are building is at a village called Wanat, deep in a remote and isolated Afghan valley surrounded by the mountain passes insurgents used to infiltrate from sanctuaries in Pakistan. Just four days later, it would come dangerously close to being overrun by an estimated 200 Taliban fighters. They're within hand grenade range at this time. Break. This is the scene Apache helicopter pilots recorded on gun camera tapes obtained by CBS News. A furious firefight, buildings in flames, and the only officer still alive on the ground calling for help. Uh, be advised, uh, we're in a bad situation. I need you to come in hot immediately. I think they're pinned down good, bro. I don't think they want to lift their heads. The enemy is so close, the Apaches will have to lay down their cannon fire within 10 meters of the American position. You know, I know it's high risk, but we need to get these guys off of us over. 10 meters. So there's got to be kids. More Taliban are shooting down on them from those buildings. The Apaches make run after devastating run. Hey, I'm in now with a pistol. There you go. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. They also come in firing their cannons, but the Taliban keep shooting back. You can see muzzle flashes down here like f***ing lightning bugs. Yeah, Roger. A desperately needed medevac helicopter tries to get in through the maelstrom, but instantly becomes a target. We're taking fire. We just got hit the lower uh, belly just to the uh, north side of the aircraft. The Apaches clear away a landing zone for the medevac. We got several casualties that we still need to move. We'll be able to pick up two now and then uh, probably two uh, more later over. Finally, reinforcements arrive and the tide of battle turns. The battle took place a year ago in a valley east of here that is now controlled by the Taliban. And it has triggered an investigation into why the 49 men of 2nd Platoon were left so exposed, so deep in enemy territory. For much of its tour, the platoon was under incessant attack, hunkered down at a base that was surrounded by high ground and could only be supplied by helicopter. Lieutenant Jonathan Brostrom set up a camera to record an assault on that base, and when he was home on leave, showed it to his father, retired Army Colonel David Brostrom. I was frankly shocked. Uh, they were getting uh, attacked and probed every day. Uh, heavy attacks by enemy forces. Rostrom's platoon and the other units fighting up and down the valley sometimes called in airstrikes on houses from which they were taking fire. My son showed me that. I, I said, you know, you just lost that village. We dropped 861 bombs with few questions asked, a senior commander is quoted as saying in a report from the Army Lessons Learned Center obtained by CBS News. They also fired white phosphorus artillery at what they believed was a Taliban campfire, rounds which were never intended to be used against personnel. White phosphorus? Yeah. They were supposed to be protecting the population. But according to the report, the people whose homes were being leveled and neighborhoods turned into battlefields saw no improvement in their lives and no real evidence of security. I said, you know, son, you, you need to get out of there. And he said, we are. We're moving to another location. The new location at Wanat was supposed to be less exposed, but it was still in enemy territory. I knew the mission had the, had the potential of being um, quite hazardous. David Zwick was the sergeant of the platoon, 49 American and 24 Afghan soldiers. I would have liked to have uh, had another platoon up there with troops in the high ground. It was July and they were short of basic necessities. The second day we were extremely low on water. Uh, we start uh, running out of water, it's, it's very hard to continue working through the heat of the day. Which meant they had to take frequent breaks from preparing their defenses. The villagers knew what was about to happen. A couple people from the village came up and said that the enemy was going to attack. Despite signs of an impending attack, unmanned surveillance drones, which had been watching over the platoon, were diverted to a higher priority mission. The not having the surveillance was the concern for me. Um, I, I th part of the planning was that, that we would have some. A camera pointed at the sky caught the first burst of machine gun fire. 
all hell broke loose. The first Apache helicopters got there an hour and five minutes later. Three-fourths of the Americans were killed or wounded. I pride myself on being able to to push forward and kind of go through to do the job. Um, for the first time in my career, I actually stopped dead in my tracks uh, when I came across um, the scene up there. Those figures are American soldiers lying dead on the ground. One of them is David Brostrom's son. And what did my son and what did those other sons die for? You have to do the investigation so this doesn't happen again. Many of the soldiers in these videos are no longer alive. Nine were killed at Wanat. An Apache pilot said it all when he heard the toll. But, uh, we will have uh, additional fallen hero missions uh, to follow. I have a total of nine KIA. Over. Damn it. Nine soldiers dead holding a piece of terrain which two days later the U.S. abandoned to the enemy. David Martin, CBS News, Afghanistan.